folks, this is just going to be a quick one where we take a look at an antenna that I put up in the backyard that needed to be trimmed due to some unfortunate circumstance. First off, I'd like to thank Dan Berg, our newest patron. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Now, my good buddy Chuck, KK6USY, sent me this my end my antennas sorry and fed half wave 80 through 10 uh, matchbox it was used and he had it sitting on the shelf and he knew i wanted one so thanks to chuck for sending this over i decided to mount it up in the backyard and i put it on a fence post that runs across the back of the property and uh, i did a total stand move and the element was cut out of pure copper speaker wire i didn't think it was going to be that much of an issue but as it turned out and you can see it here mounted over the house next to that gutter, which isn't probably a good thing, probably another stand move, but that's the best spot I had for it. Anyhow, what happened was, is I went outside today or yesterday after a couple of weeks, and I noticed that the antenna had gotten significant drooping in it. So what that told me is, is that the wire stretched and I needed to shorten it. So I did uh, what any good ham radio operator would do, and I went and I plugged everything into Nano VNA. So with Nano VNA and Nano VNA Saver running on my Linux laptop, what I did is, is I set up a sweep to start at around 6 megahertz and then go all the way up to 30 megahertz. And then that would give me 7 through 10, which is what I would use this antenna for. The uh, wire is cut at 66 feet, give or take. And then I run through a quick um, calibration. I use the calibration assistant in Nano VNA Saver, and I just do the short open load. I don't do the through or isolation test because we're not going to be using any of the S parameters. Now this calibration is sped up through the magic of computers and the internet. Once it's done, I go ahead and I run my sweep. When I run the sweep, one of the things that I notice is that the dips in my uh, SWR had shifted left. Not significantly, the antenna is still usable, but it shifted left enough for me to be concerned about it. So we pack up uh, some tools and then we head outside to trim the antenna. And uh, I didn't know exactly how much to take off, so we're going to guesstimate a little bit here. But uh, it should be easy enough for us to do. Here you can see I used the scientific method just to cut off a random length. And then uh, we are going to attach a new terminal to the end of the wire. I use this adhesive lined uh, heat shrink. I find it gives some pretty good uh, strain relief and holds everything together pretty well. I'm a big fan of this stuff. Oh, and that's a Harbor Freight uh, heat gun. And then here you can see, I guess I cut off around 8 or 9 inches. I didn't measure it. But uh, now we're going to set everything back up. We're going to go inside and we're going to take a look on Nano VNA Saver. So here you can see the uh, blue trace is the reference from beforehand. And now this is the trace after shorting it. And you can see it's still a little bit long. So I went out and I cut it again, this time about 7 or 8 inches, and uh, it gets a little bit better and a little bit worse on 15. Um, this is probably as good as it's going to get. Now here is uh, in between the first cut and the last cut. And uh, you can see it moved, but it's still not ideal in 40. Uh, 20 looks pretty good, but the SWR is still a little closer to 1.4. Uh, 15 has moved from being on the long side to being on the short side, which is okay. I don't really use 15. And then 10 moved to the upper part of the band. Um, I'm going to replace this with some steel wire in the future, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, and then here you can see some results. I played around uh, on FT8 for a while and uh, was able to get out pretty good. So I'm happy with it overall, but again, I'm going to replace the wire in the future. I just wanted to do a quick video. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it.